today I taught both ninth grade biochem and 10th grade biochem. Uh, in 10th grade, we're learning about catalysts and enzymes, and they're actually doing a project. So they have to create a video on one of the concepts that we learned. So each table had a different concept. So one of the labs we did in class was a lactose and lactase lab. So they're going to be kind of explaining what we did in the lab in a video format. And then in a few days, they will be presenting that video to the entire class. Say cheese, Wes. I can't eat cheese. I'm lactose intolerant. No, silly. When you're lactose intolerant, it means you can't eat cheese. Oh, I remember that. We said it that in biochemistry. Remember in Miss Tessa's class, we did an experiment about lactose and lactase? Yeah, what about it? Oh, wait. Well, oh, wait, no, that's what. Okay. That's what you said. <laughs> but, but that's what they wrote, so. For like the first scene, you can have the drawing of the experiment being done, and the next scene could be you guys taking a selfie. I was supposed to and so then, it's like, that okay. or their reaction of the chemicals. That is what I'm confused about. We can ask her. So yeah, precious. Tessa, when we draw the storyboard, right? Uh -huh. Well, we need to, uh, we will draw ourselves. So we're, 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 in the beginning, we're, we're going to start off talking to each other and those kind of things. And uh, do I draw that or do I draw the chemical reaction of the... Of the Whatever, story? you can draw like yourself as stick figures if it's just you talking. Yeah, we're just trying yeah. to think of the video. So right, the first one... Yeah, the first that's fine. Because we're supposed to draw each scene. So like just for the first box, you draw the experiment. Second box, you draw you guys like talking of, like taking a selfie or something. Or you could either, no, no, take a picture of you guys. Take a picture. Draw like you guys like walking and talking. And then the second thing could be all of us taking a selfie. And then the last one could be me and Nate talking. So that one is stuff All right, I'm going to work on that one. You guys are doing great. Keep doing all of that. Thank you. Oh, this is like a TV show thing. I like this. It's like we don't find other different like assignments that we did on here to write that. Our bio project is designing an enzyme or some type of project about an enzyme. So my group decided to do a video um, with some art in a voiceover, um, like pretty much a little film and a little artistic creativity all in one, which is really cool. So I think it the project based learning style here opens up a whole nother world. You're able to show your creativity, you're able to show how you can speak. Um, I'm not the best at art, but I'm really good at speaking at times. So I was able to do a project with like a public speaking event and write a speech and just record myself with the speech, which middle schools and most high schools don't allow you to do, which is really cool and different. And SLA allows you to show your creativity and show your strengths. Absolutely. They can do whatever they want as long as it's a video. I give them a lot of creativity, a lot of freedom to produce whatever they want. I do have a rubric with certain things that they have to include. So, for example, the video has to be two to five minutes long. Um, another example is every person must be seen or heard in the video. So if they want to do an animation, they can do a voiceover, but then every person has to speak in that video. So it gives them a lot of freedom and creativity to do what they would like, but then we still kind of end up with the same kind of format to present on Monday. One thing a lot of people get confused about is like we do still take assessments at times. Um, and we are prepared just like any other school to take an assessment. Just because we're project-based doesn't mean we're not prepared to take SATs and standardized testing. A lot of our students go to major universities and colleges, that, and we prepare them to go there. Well, we still have the state test here we have to worry about. You just have to, have to understand that doing project-based learning doesn't mean you don't 
get the same information. You just get it in a different way. Like in math class, they'll still have days where they have to learn how to do different equations. It's not the teacher's not handing you a box and saying create. They're still facilitating. They're still teaching you. So I see them still doing fine on the test. I I say to other people, the best way to do well on the test is to not care about the te- not think about the test, not obsess about it. Um, so my project is me and my friend Miles are making a solar panel. Um, we have to put together different solar cells to make one larger panel, and then we have to make a uh, charge controller to control the amount of energy going from the solar panel into whatever we're charging. There's a uh, there's a night here where the you can pitch your idea for your project to the school, and then you can ask for money if you need money from the school. And so once we do that, we can order our solar cells that we need. I think it's, at least with the capstone, I think it's really helpful because you get to choose like a topic that you are interested in. And for me, if I'm interested in something, I'm going to put a lot more effort into it. Um, and so I want to go into engineering. And so being able to learn more about that is helpful. Um, I think that project-based learning it actually makes you want to learn things about the subject you're learning. And traditional teaching methods, it's more like you have to memorize this so that you can get that A on the test and then you're good and then you can just forget it. But with project-based learning, it's more ingrained into your mind, into how you learn, and you can more apply that to how you take that with a stride into how you deal with it in the next life. And I feel like project-based learning really helps people to understand a topic more broadly instead of just memorizing the facts that they're given. I feel like every kid has that creative side to them that they want to be able to share with people, that they want to be able to share with their teachers and be like, hey, I might not be that great at this, but my drawing skills, though, I can really interpret that and I can really show you what I can do to get that in. I feel like for anyone, it doesn't really matter what part or country or wherever you're from, that it really helps to be able to express yourself in a way that allows you to learn and allows you to still be able to get something out of the classroom. I think the differentiated instruction is very important. I think the problem-solving aspect of um, problem-based learning can't be emphasized enough. I think the engagement that you get with children, big and bigger, small and big, is very important um, because if we can get the, the hearts of our children, if we can get them engaged, they'll keep learning and we want them to become learners, right? We want them to become active, lifelong learners. So if they get excited and see that this is a process that they want to do for the rest of their lives and we give them the tools to do that, that's a very important step forward.